We use random number generators everywhere, whether it's to keep a stronger password or to get a fake zip code. Stuff like gambling and the lottery makes the most of these number combinations. But have you ever wondered what's going on behind it all? Is there a mastermind deciding what number combo to give you? In this video, we'll talk about how a random number generator works. First off, why do they exist? Think of it like a job that no one really wants to do, but they have to. Imagine you're in a group of people, and someone has to assign numbers randomly. You can't trust anyone not to be biased, but a computer can do this job easily. Randomness is at the heart of gambling, video games, statistical sampling, and most importantly, cryptography. If they weren't random, our devices wouldn't have important security features and would be much easier to hack. And only computers can make up random numbers by looking at unpredictable predictable outside data. And if you're thinking, okay, what kind of outside data? Well, it's really simple. It looks at information in the real world, like how fast a mouse moves or how loud a fan is, and extracts data from it. Recently, this topic's become a little bit controversial. Obviously, with digital surveillance and all that, it's no surprise that we're always terrified while using the internet. We're questioning whether the random number generator chip built into the hardware can be trusted. To understand why you might might not be able to trust it, you'll need to know how random numbers are made and what they're used for. Up next, what's a true random number? Before we get into how a computer gets the job done, let's first try to crack what a random number even is. We've got true random numbers and pseudo-random ones. If the computer wants to make a true random number, then it's gotta measure something happening outside of it at that exact moment. Like the movement of the mouse we mentioned earlier, or even changes in an atom's radioactivity. The whole the whole idea is to get some data that absolutely can't stay the same. It's like the universe being totally random and, you know, unpredictable. This kind of number combo makes sure that your data will stay safe, because no one can guess a random value. Did you know that it could even be something as random as noise in the air? You'd best believe your computer's watching you through the camera. Kidding. But seriously, it's not like anyone can guess how many times you press a key after 2pm. That's why these random numbers are super helpful. And there are pseudo-random numbers. You can also use fake random numbers instead of true ones. How does this work? Well, basically, using the seed value and an algorithm, a computer could make numbers that look random but are actually predictable. In this case, it's obviously not picking up on information from the real world. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean something bad. For example, it doesn't matter if true random numbers or fake ones cause the things that happen in a video game. But let's be real. Real. You don't want to use pseudo-random numbers that an attacker could figure out if you're using encryption. Still don't get it? Let's talk tech. For example, imagine an attacker knows how the pseudo-random number generator works and even the seed value. And let's say that an encryption algorithm takes a pseudo-random number from this algorithm and uses it to make an encryption key without adding any more randomness. If an attacker knows enough, they could work backward to figure out the pseudo-random number that the encryption algorithm must have chosen in that case. Case. Then they'll be able to break the encryption easily. Then, let's look at how they both work. A TRNG needs several pieces of hardware in order to turn some physical event into a number. First, a transducer changes the parameter being measured into an electrical signal. Then, an amplifier makes the random signal changes stronger so that the device can pick them out. A converter from analog to digital changes the signal into a digital number. Once the algorithm and seed are set, nothing can change the number numbers that are outputted in a PRNG. This is called a recurrence relation because each number in the sequence is linked to the one before it. PRNGs are periodic, which means that after a certain number of iterations, they repeat themselves. A long period is a sign of a good PRNG algorithm. The machine must get a starting point or seed as input, then create a new number by putting the seed number through a series of mathematical changes. Use the value found as the starting point for the next round and repeat the steps until the length you want is reached. Okay, so what's the difference? The main difference between PRNGs and TRNGs is easier to understand if you compare and contrast computer-generated random numbers to rolls of a dice. Since the pseudo-random number generator makes random numbers by using mathematical formulas or pre-calculated lists, it's basically like someone rolling a dice many times and writing down the results. You get the next dice roll on the list when you ask for a random number. 
this means that there are an infinite number of ways the list can be used. The numbers look like they were picked randomly, but they were chosen ahead of time. True random number generators work by getting a computer to actually roll the dice, or by using some other physical thing that's easier to connect to a computer than a dice. So, are pseudo-random numbers bad? Well, not exactly. As we've already said, pseudo-random numbers are, in theory, easy to figure out. But that doesn't mean it's always a bad thing. For instance, your Spotify shuffle is based on a pseudo-random number. Doesn't really matter if it's true or not. Even in cryptography, most of the time a pseudo-random number is safe enough. In real life, people will have a lot of measurements that'll make it hard to figure out how the generator works. Common sense tells us that there are two ways to tell if the generator is safe enough. First, if the calculations are older than the universe's age, give it a hundred or a thousand years to break. You're good to go. Second, if the cost of attacking is much higher than what it would bring in return, for example, an attacker might want to break the verification code so they can book any tickets they want. If the attacker's got to do a lot of math to break the generator function, they might give up, because it costs a lot to use a high-performance computer. Like in car remote controls, there's no other option because it's how they work. The remote control and car come up with pseudo-random numbers simultaneously for the key. Now, let's look at Intel's number generator. Basically, Intel chips a random number generator called RDRAND that's built into the hardware to make things easier for developers, and help generate random numbers that are safe. It means that when the software asks for random numbers, the chip gives them to the software. The problem is that we don't know what's happening inside the random number generator. If RDRAND had a backdoor for the NSA, the government would be able to break encryption keys that were made using only information from RDRAND. This is a very big problem. The developers of FreeBSD took away the ability to use RDRAND directly as a source of randomness in 2013, saying they couldn't trust it. The output of the RDRAND device would be fed into another algorithm that adds more random data. This would ensure that any backdoors in the generator wouldn't matter. Linux already worked this way. The random data coming from RDRAND was made even more random, so that even if there was a backdoor, it couldn't be predicted. The Intel CEO stayed quiet when he was questioned on this recently on Reddit. Yikes! Of course, this probably isn't just an Intel chip problem. The people who made FreeBSD also called out Via's chips by name. This fight shows how important it is to make random numbers that are really random and can't be predicted. And finally, last year's random number generator reveal. There's a reason everyone's so riled up about how they work and what that means for our data. Just last year, we found out that hardware random number generators have a serious flaw. The numbers aren't really random. This means that most of our data is actually pretty vulnerable, and that means a lot of trouble for people who use these generators for serious stuff like crypto investments. The problem's that most devices choose encryption keys of zero or something even worse, which basically means that any upstream could mean security loss. The researcher said that the way the peripheral is being called on right now, it's wrong. They also pointed out that error code responses aren't being checked everywhere. This means that the number generated isn't really random. And even worse, it can be predicted. This can lead to partial entropy, uninitialized memory, and even crypto keys with plain zeros. It all points to some serious IoT fixing if we want to make sure our data stays safe and doesn't get hacked. That's a wrap for this video. Do you trust a computer's calculation? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.